Well, still another embezzlement story in the Eastern Sierra, specifically Bishop, with several people charged with embezzling merchandise from Kmart in Bishop. Now, a press release from the Bishop Police Department states that on August 10th, the Bishop Police Department was contacted by Asset Protections Managers. This for the Sears Holdings Company, the parent company to the Kmart franchise. Press release notes that through the course of their investigation, it was determined that six current and former employees of the Bishop Kmart store conspired in the act of embezzling a large amount of merchandise from within the store over the last several months, totaling in excess of $50,000. Now, on August 11th, Bishop police officers responded to the residence of a former Bishop Kmart employee and recovered retail merchandise that was stolen from Kmart. Lorena Castro, 20 years of age, a bishop, was taken into custody. Now, later in the evening, op officers contacted Jasmine Corona Vargas, age 20, a bishop, and also a former employee of Kmart. Both women were placed under arrest and charged with possession of stolen property. On August 14th, Bishop Police Department officers made contact and took into custody the following employees of Kmart. Rachel Dominguez, age 33, Jamie Lynn Hutchinson, age 31, Isabel Darlene Morello, age 35, and Nicole Adrian Rogers, age 36, all of Bishop. All four females were transported and booked into the Inyo County Jail for charges of embezzlement of over $950 and conspiracy to commit a felony crime. Now this investigation is ongoing and anyone with additional information is encouraged to contact the Bishop Police Department at 760-873-5866. Well, the Reds Meadow Road has been selected for a California Federal Lands Access Program. That's CalFLAP. This project preliminary funded in 2022 based on availability of funding. Uh, press release notes that as this last winter demonstrated, Reds Meadow Road is in need of major repairs and stabilization. This said Nora Gamino, the forest engineer. She said this project is an exciting opportunity to make much needed improvements to this narrow mountain road so that our visitors can continue to enjoy these areas for years to come. Now the proposed project will improve the deteriorated condition of Reds Meadow Road and the press release notes provide safe, reliable access to recreational resources. Project will facilitate emergency response in the valley and enhance safety for motorists and non-motorists alike. Now the scope will include reconstruction and widening of the upper two and a half miles to two lanes and repaving and slight realignments over the last over the lower 5.8 miles of Reds Meadow Road. This work will include retaining walls, slope stabilization and drainage improvements. Town of Mammoth Lakes and your National Forest and Devis Post Pile National Monument work together to submit the proposal to Federal Highways Administration to request the funding. The Town of Mammoth Lakes will ultimately assume control of and responsibility for the road. Now, the total project cost, including engineering and construction, is expected to be $24,250,000. Town of Mammoth Lakes has requested the use of toll credits to meet the 11.47% minimum match requirement, estimated to be $2,800,000. National Park Service and the U.S. Forest Service are also contributing funding to meet the match requirement. Additionally, the Inyo National Forest has invested $740,000 to project development thus far and submitted a strong application that demonstrated a commitment to improving Reds Meadow Road. Public meeting scheduled for Thursday, September 7th, Swede Z and Mammoth Lakes, 5 to 7 p.m. Public will have the opportunity to comment on the proposed reconstruction project. Well, Deb Murphy filed this story saying there seems to be a trend here when the big guns from the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power attend Inyo County Supervisors meetings. The end result is cautious optimism. At least that was the case last Tuesday when the Inyo County Board of Supervisors discussed condemnation proceedings on all three county landfills all operating on LADWP leases. Board also addressed the issue of paying for aerial applications of a larvicide to install, to forestall the threat of West Nile virus. Now, last week, LADWP's Assistant General Manager of Water Systems, Richard Harrisick, 
urged Inyo County not to proceed with the resolutions that would begin the eminent domain process and offered to negotiate a sale price fair to Inyo County minus the water rights, but with a commitment to supply water for the landfill's operation. Harrisick citing a letter received by the county Monday afternoon offering to sell the land, but not the water rights. He asked the county not to pursue condemnation and said the department was ready to partner in closing the landfill. Now that offer should raise the question, why would Inyo County pay serious money to buy landfill sites and then close the landfill? Inyo County Board of Supervisors unanimously voted for the three resolutions that represent the first step in the process. And Deb Murphy writes just when you think things may proceed smoothly, LADWP issued a statement from General Manager David Wright last Tuesday in mid-afternoon. The statement brings up the 2,500 violations since 1993 at all three sites for poor landfill operations. However, over the last 10 years, the sites have garnered 341 violations. Roughly 60% of those were related to cow cycle permits that could not be revised without LADWP's okay. Now that LADWP statement says, we intend to fully participate in Inyo County's eminent domain proceedings, ensure proper appraisal of the land and safeguard environmental and water protections through appropriate environmental documentation. We will also continue to pursue negotiations of the sale of the landfills. As a much better long-term solution, LADWP continues to urge Inyo County to consider the mutually beneficial solution of building a modern landfill that meets all current standards outside of the Owens River watershed, end quote. Now, also as of last week, Inyo Agricultural Commissioner Nate Reed described the issues of massive mosquito infestations breeding at a frightening rate in standing water, part of LADWP's water spreading to divert the epic runoff before it destroyed infrastructure on Owens Lake. Trap mosquitoes in West Bishop and Lone Pine indicate the presence of West Nile virus. The solution, aerial application of a biological larvicide to the tune of a quarter million dollars. Reed had petitioned LADWP to pick up the tab since the unprecedented mosquito count resulted from the water spreading. LADWP's Director of Water Operations, Anselmo Collins said, we will be providing funds. I've directed staff to expedite the process and work with the Ag Commissioner's Office. Also last week, Owens Valley Mosquito Abatement Program confirmed that another mosquito sample tested positive for West Nile virus. This sample was collected in an area outside of Bishop on August 15th. This is the sixth positive sample de detected in Inyo County during the 2017 mosquito season. Now, Rob Miller of the Owens Valley Mosquito Abatement Program said that West Nile virus fines can peak as late as mid-September in California, and it is possible we could find positive mosquitoes into the fall. You're asked to resport, report mosquito problems to the Owens Valley Mosquito Abatement Program. You can call 760-873-7853. Deb Murphy's story, the LADWP response, as well as the West Nile virus update posted in full on our website, sierrawave.net. <clears throat> well, the 2017-2018 Mono County Grand Jury, currently composed of 11 grand jurors with one alternate. Deborah Perel is the foreperson of the grand jury. Remaining members of the grand jury are Joe Adler, Susie Baines, Chris Brandt, Thomas Gaunt, Tom Heller, Juliana Jones, Greg Newbury, David Richmond, Kirk Stapp, and Catherine Williams, along with alternate grand juror, Giselle Kennedy, Giselle Kenny, excuse me, a detailed explanation of how the grand jury operates and a complaint form for the public to use to recommend problems or issues that the grand jury should investigate are available on the Mono County Superior Court's website, monocourt.org. We'll be back with more news.